<laughs> First time to see you. <laughs> This abstract that you were saying, if you didn't have much abstract, when you were sending abstracts. <laughs> Morning star. <laughs> Morning star. <laughs> okay, so uh, this one is on uh, mercury modeling in soil. Uh, most of the work has done by my colleague again, Petro Artem. So I will first sketch the uh, context of the study and the merc mercury cycle in the soil, and then how we implemented this uh, mercury model into HP1. And I will show you some results of uh, sensitivity analysis using elementary effects. Uh, the work was done within a small project called IMAGE, which stands for Enhanced Knowledge of Mercury Fate and Transport for Improved Management of Mercury Soil Contamination. And the work of uh, our group was on to provide a numerical tool for uh, mercury fate and transport in soil. And after uh, a lot of thinking we decided to use HP1 for that <coughs> and then the second um, it's a small project so we didn't have any time to do experiments or to uh, validate or model with experimental results but uh, one of the important stuff also when, when you are doing a model is to analyze which parameters and which processes are important so we did a sensitivity analysis uh, of this numerical model um, the, uh, the pro it, 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 uh, the project was concentrated on uh, contaminated soils by anthropogenic uh, origins, so it's not about uh, uh, natural mercury. And uh, this comes into the soil by uh, mer mercury mining, uh, gold and silver mining in an artisanal way, and then during uh, the last century also by different industries, uh, especially the grower alkali, alkali plants. Uh, are very important. Uh, also, some manometer spills, also, wood preservation industry, uh, and also fuel, fuels and things like that. Tanneries, they also sometimes use mercury. And then there is also cemeteries from uh, dental fillings. Uh, this is just uh, an overview of uh, how the mercury production evolves over the few centuries. So, you see the, the mining activities up to 1900. And then the industrial uses uh, during the last uh, century. But I think there is no almost a complete ban on, on the use of, of mercury because it's quite a hemotoxic element. Um, it's also a complex uh, element uh, if you look from uh, the point of view of the geochemistry. Uh, and here it's a conceptual model of, of mercury pathways in the soil in an unsaturated system. Um, the grey boxes uh, indicate the different uh, species or speciations or forms of mercury in soil. So we have dissolved mercury uh, in two uh, oxidation states and they can have a uh, complexation both with the inorganic and organic lines into the soil. And then you have also the organic form of uh, mercury. It's uh, methyl mercury and dimethyl mercury. Um, then you have it's present as an apple in the, the pure elemental form. You can have it on this uh, precipitated form, like in cinnabar, mercury sulfide, and then it sorbs uh, very strongly, mainly to soil organic matter. And it can be taken up by the vegetation also. Then there are a few uh, uh, sources of uh, external sources of mercury to the soil, so we have the anthro. These are the blue boxes, you have the anthropogenic emissions, uh, the atmospheric depositions, uh, the, the, the litter fall from the vegetation, and the ore deposits and bedrocks. And then you have a, a few uh, fluxes out of the system, so you have uh, volatilization to the atmosphere or obtained by the vegetation, and then you have uh, leaching to the groundwater or subsurface drainage. We didn't include all these processes in the model, uh, so we didn't really have the input from the atmosphere in our model. We neglected the vegetation part because only a very small fraction of the mercury is in the vegetation part. Uh, so we didn't do any atmospheric modeling. Uh, we didn't uh, include napple migration. We had initial contamination with napple, but then, then we had to interpret that as residual napple contamination. 
we, don't, we didn't have the subsurface drainage because we used the one d model and we didn't have the methylation uh, reactions uh, because this is mainly in anaerobic and anoxic conditions so in wetlands and lakes and there was a little bit less relevant for aerobic systems which we were dealing with here but still it's quite a, a complex reaction network uh, this picture you already seen in, in a previous talk um, and I, I hope you still remember most of it so I will not go into detail uh, one point is that when we do pure thermodynamic calculations we could not have the coexistence uh, co of mercury 2 and mercury 0 or the solid phases with the aqueous phase so that's from a thermodynamic point not possible but uh, talking with, uh, with our project uh, members you see that in the field that they coexist so we have to include there some reactions kinetic reactions so NATO dissolution uh, uh, solid phase dissolution and the ox uh, reduction process were all treated in a kinetic way and all the other reactions were treated in equilibrium way um, yeah. okay. uh, the, the dissolution of cinnabar depends strongly on the amount of dissolved organic matter due to mercury complexation and so mercury complexation to dissolved organic matter is a very important process as we have seen further also uh, so we implemented that in, uh, in, in HP1 so for the aqueous phase we needed to have all speciation and inorganic complexation reactions of mercury incorporated in it within this project BRGM updated his uh, their database demo them uh, with mercury data and they do that in a consistent way so with the uh, thermodynamic data which is already in the database uh, but they didn't include any complexation reactions with dissolved organic matter and this is quite important because mercury too has a very high affinity for organic matter and very special to the PL groups into the organic matter and so uh, to describe the different functional groups on dissolved organic matter we basically define three, three different components of, um, of the organic matter with different complexation constants and we added a fourth one which represented the tiles with, uh, tiles with a very large complexation constant um, and the soil organic matter well, so we also have uh, the, the solid phase organic matter <coughs> and we have the similar groups uh, of, of functional groups and TL sites on it and we simulate the adsorption process by pattern exchange processes um, it's uh, such that uh, this is, has a, a, a rather small capacity but it's very strongly binding so it's a very site, a specific binding site um, we did some uh, so to, to, to identify which processes and which parameters are the most sensitive. We simulated a hypothetical, a hypothetical case: one meter sand soil with a grass cover in the top 30 centimeters. We have daily uh, precipitation and potential evapotranspiration rates during 50 years. Um, the rainwater, uh, the solid boundary condition at the top, was uh, typically for rainwater and uh, because dissolved organic matter is such an important component we added it here a little bit artificially via the rain put, uh, input water so, because we didn't have a model which produced dissolved organic matter into that uh, conceptual model and if we do not add it by the rainwater yeah, it will just be leached out within one year and we don't have that effect anymore so that was a little bit to, to mimic uh, an ongoing production of dissolved organic matter in the soil uh, we considered uh, initial mercury contamination in the top 10 cm and we have it in three forms either solid phase as cinnabar, either completely as natto or completely as dissolved uh, mercury 2 or we did combinations of these three sources and then uh, we had sorts of sites of soil organic matter in the top 30 cm Basically, all mercury which leached from this top 30 centimeter is also leached to the ground water because there is no solution anymore. But that uh, we could uh, extend this zone or make it shorter, so that's not really a, a big issue. And also, this organic matter can interact with the soil 
and we describe it by absorption by a long wave constant. So, first examples of, uh, of simulation results is uh, cinnabar uh, initial contamination, and we will look here at the profiles of cinnabar and mercury sorbed to the solid phase over a period of 50 years. And so, it's a so you see the red line is the uh, cinnabar and the black line is the uh, sort one and you see, you see during time the dissolution of this uh, mercury uh, cinnabar with time and then the, the uh, transfer of the mercury to the deeper horizons uh, as expected of course uh, we have a little bit faster dissolution rate at the top that's because the dome concentration there is the highest and the dissolution rate depends on this uh, parameter this is uh, for the same uh, uh, simulation case, but here we look, look to the fluxes at the bottom of the profile. Uh, the gray bands are the precipitation rates, and then uh, the full line is the moving average of the mercury flux as a function of time, uh, average over one month, and then the dotted are the daily values. And you see that it takes about 30 years to start to have leaching of mercury above 10 to the minus 4 microgram per liter. And then another observation is that uh, daily fluxes can order uh, can uh, vary about uh, two orders of magnitude. Uh, then we did uh, so we had this type of, of in, uh, interpretation for all different in, uh, initial contamination uh, scenarios. And then we looked at uh, uh, sensitivity analysis. So we did a screening method based on the Morris one at the time design where we have a number of parameters and each parameter has a number of uh, levels of values and uh, we, we, are, we are stepping through the uh, parameter space by always changing only one parameter yeah? and uh, that's done in a random way the selection of the parameter and in which way we have to change it that's all in a random way but, uh, and for every step we calculate the difference between the previous uh, between the two uh, Simulations for some indicators, and that will give you the indicator, uh, the the elementary effect of this parameter. And we have 30 parameters and five trajectories for each of these uh, elements. And so we can find the balance between computation and effort, and to identify which factors are negligible if your interactions, non-linearities, or non-monoticity. And you have these kind of uh, results. So here it's a result for. Again, the Cinnabar case, where the indicator is the amount of mercury leach from the profile after 50 years. We did 65 simulations for these five trajectories, and between 0 to 15% of the initial mercury is leached from the horizon. And here you see plots. I will only go uh, into this one here then. Uh, you see the uh, average of the elementary effect of the different parameters versus the variance of the elementary uh, uh, effects and if this is high, this indicates non-linearity or interaction between other parameters. And you see, by far, the most sensitive parameter is the amount of dissolved organic matter in the soil, uh, because this is the all basically all mercury in the aqueous phase is complexed to dissolved organic matter, and that's a mobile element so uh, component. So that will be this is the responsible for the leaching of, of the mercury. And then the other parameters which are important, let's say, are of course the compensation coextents of mercury with this dissolved organic matter. Uh, this depends also on time, uh, which parameters are important. So we, here it's uh, about after 5, 25, and 50 years. And here it's for the indicator, the mercury, which is still in the topsoil. And I want only to uh, pay attention to the uh, parameter 9, which is the sorption uh, capacity or the, the compensation constant of uh, the fulvic and humic acids on the organic matter. So not the black teals, but the, uh, the other functional groups. And after five years, this parameter is not sensitive. After um, 25 uh, years, it's a little bit sensitive, but after uh, 50 years, it's very sensitive. So in the beginning, you don't have much mercury in your aqueous phase, so everything can 
be on the tile sides, but with time these become saturated, and then of course the compensation constants on the other functional groups on this other organic matter plays a more important role. So, as a conclusion, uh, we have uh, implemented a model which can model the phase transfer of mercury on some specific conditions, oxygen conditions, and anthropopollution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions to Didri? You had enough for me. <laughs> okay, thanks Didri. And we move to the third example of 18.2.